you like to sit with me? Come here. Look at that. What a good girl. Hi guys, it's Ronnie and welcome back to my channel. <laughs> also, welcome Goose. She decided to hang out with me right now. But today I'm going to be talking about autism. I said in my previous video that I wanted to talk more about autism on my channel and I'm going to keep up with that. Now, I will say, as you may have noticed that I didn't post anything in the past like month or so, mostly because I've been prepping for a lot of stuff that I want to do in the future and putting those plans into motion, but also I just have been trying to figure out how I want to structure talking about autism on my channel because it's kind of a big deal. Like, I understand as somebody who grew up in a town where there weren't other people of color really around, I had to essentially be the spokesperson to a lot of the people I knew about being a black person. And like looking at me, you can see I'm not that dark. I didn't really experience a lot of like just inherent racism from my peers or other people around me. I didn't have that experience very much. So becoming a spokesperson for black issues as someone who's mixed, that's a weird line to walk because I know personally that it is not my space really to speak up about black issues unless being mixed specifically comes up. And so that's why I feel like in talking about autism as an autistic person, I do have the experience of being autistic because I am and you're just born that way and that's just the way it is. But I obviously don't have the experience of every autistic person and I'm not a mental health professional. So most of what I talk about is anecdotal and really just what I've experienced and what I've read others' experiences have been. So more or less, I just wanted to take this task very seriously, but also, can you not put your booty right in the camera? But most importantly, I just wanted to take this issue very seriously while also being able to give my artistic perspective in it because I haven't really been making films in the past few years, partially because of just like depression and also because I have been, <laughs> I've been so focused on other things and trying to figure out what my story is to tell. And I think that this is a story of mine that I really do want to tell and share because as I am getting further into adulthood, I'm having a lot more realizations about myself, about what my future could look like, and about what my past means to me now. Either way, it's something I'm passionate about. It's something that in my real life, I talk a lot about and like my life centers around a lot. But online, I have been open about it, but I haven't really talked about it that much other than talking about it in sort of a colloquial way in terms of if you're also neurodivergent or you're also autistic you may know what I'm talking about in general but if you're not autistic then it may be kind of confusing or you may not know exactly what I'm talking about so if you're someone who doesn't know anything about autism I definitely would suggest and I will leave some information in the description down below but I would definitely suggest doing more research on your own but if you're someone who's neurodivergent or autistic and you sort of understand like what autism is, I would still urge you to stick around and watch my videos in talking about autism because, you know, it's nice to hear a fellow neurodivergent person's story. And so if you're interested in my story, then definitely stick around because I'm going to talk a little bit more after I get into the definition. So let's get into that. First off, my disclaimers because... This obviously needs a disclaimer. Number one, I'm not a professional. Most of my knowledge is anecdotal and just from what I've gathered after my diagnosis. Also, I wouldn't use any of my videos to diagnose specifically because I'm not a professional. And as well as that, autism is a spectrum, which means symptoms can often vary. So these aren't hard and fast rules. They are just simply 
sort of the basics and overall concepts. What is autism? So a brief definition of autism is that it is a developmental disability that is known widely by its impact on social skills among other symptoms. To me, there are three main parts to autism. The first is the social aspect. The second is the sensory experience. And the third is the internal world. Number one, the social aspect. Many of us find social interactions extremely difficult. I've always found the analogy that everyone else was given a toolbox with tools inside, whereas autistic people were given just a toolbox. It makes it that much harder to communicate when you're not given the same starting point as everyone else. For me, this means not knowing what is appropriate to say in certain situations, constantly monitoring my facial expressions or practicing them in the mirror, or oversharing with people that I don't know very well, and even practicing interactions either in the mirror or in my head over and over again so when they actually do come up, I can do them very well. These things may seem small, but when they happen consistently, it can put a strain on our relationships and make social interactions extremely draining. It can also make maintaining relationships really, really difficult. Number two, the sensory experience. Our five senses help us to experience the world around us, but for autistic people, it can make the world hard to handle. I'm generally hypersensitive, so the world can become a lot for me very easily, as opposed to someone who is hyposensitive, as in they aren't as sensitive to certain things. For me, this means loud sounds, certain fabrics, bright lights, changes in recipes and my favorite products, or even perfumes can be too much. I often struggle to regulate my sound sensitivity, so oftentimes you'll see me wearing headphones. When you're sensitive to everyday occurrences, it makes every day overwhelming, thus making it hard to function sometimes. Number three, our internal world. Many people know autism for the way we're obsessed with certain topics to the point it can be annoying to outsiders. Many autistic people have intricate inner worlds that we can sometimes get lost in. Growing up, I would spend hours by myself just lost in doing my favorite things like dressing up my dolls or playing Barbie games online. I think one of the most stereotypical obsessions that people think of are trains, which I also do happen to love trains. Maybe not to the extent of other autistic people, but it is something I am very interested in. However, when you have a very intricate inner world, it can feel very lonely because there aren't other people to share it with, but it also makes us feel very safe when necessary. There's a lot more to autism than just the things I mentioned, but I wanted to briefly touch on it to start out. The three parts I covered are deeply connected and make up the life and experience of autistic people. Plus, there's still a lot we don't know about autism because of how little it's been studied and how much time has been wasted on trying to fix us. Organizations like Autism Speaks have actually set autism research back by a lot in trying to fix autistic people instead of trying to help and create resources to help both autistic children and autistic adults. Because unfortunately, even though it's very important to help children and to give them the love and encouragement they need to grow, we forget that children become adults and adults still need help and adults still need resources to thrive. So that's sort of my artistic way of saying this is what autism is to me and these are sort of the things that make it up in sort of loose terms. And obviously there's a lot more to autism than just the things that I mentioned, but I did want to just very briefly give sort of what I view as the most important aspects to know about autism. But I will say like part of the reason I haven't been able to be consistent in uploading and all of that 
has been a lot of me trying to like fight my autism to like do everything and it is very frustrating that we live in a world where we constantly if you want to be a creator you have to be creating as in you have to be pumping out content constantly like I follow this guy who he uploads a new video every single day he doesn't have an editor or anything so I'm like how does he do it I don't understand like how far ahead must he be planning to be able to upload every single day so it's just crazy to me anyway that's all for this video I know it was kind of long and I know that me actually talking about autism and me like explaining it was sort of the shorter end of this video but again I hope you stick around for the future entries episodes whatever we want to call it <laughs> I'll call it an episode but I hope you stick around in the future for the for more videos both to learn more about autism and also to support me and learn about me and my experience with autism again like I said before I will leave some resources in the description down below in case you want to learn more about autism and you want to do some of your own like side research I'll also leave some of my favorite creators simply because I think hearing it from autistic people like person like first person information is the best way to learn and understand autistic people instead of just hearing somebody say this is what autistic people do or say or whatever because in reality it's not as conclusive as being able to hear multiple accounts from people who live every day with a disability so all right that's all i have for you guys don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in my next one